Why we meditate upon the sorrows, we have this devotion, is to help us to approach the cross, as I was saying, the purpose of Lent is to grow in unity with Christ and sufferings. And as St. John, the only apostle, after the crucifixion, stayed close to our lady, so should we stay close to our lady, especially in her sorrows. And so, we travel with her, as we know from um, from the tradition that Our Lady is the one that began the station of the cross. She was the first one to go back to the stations of our Lord's uh, journey to Calvary. And so, too, we should go with her and, and try to remain with her and her sorrow and to see you know, what she experienced and to grow in unity with the, the Blessed Virgin Mary in, in the Son, as she was close to the Divine Son, as the spiritual writers say, she took part in in the sacrifice of the cross in this way, in her suffering, and so she had a, spot, a part in the priesthood as she presented her in a temple, and she offered it as a sacrifice to God, and then she gave it back to God. Um, and so, mostly for me, I like to meditate on um, the third song, having read before that this is the most painful song for our people. You know, the third song, the loss of the child Jesus in the temple. And so, you think of the other songs, you know, very, uh, very easy to imagine the, the pain and suffering and anguish between those two parts when she saw the Lord on the way to Calvary. And he's, he's dripping blood and he's crowned with thorns and his cross is way on his shoulders, pressing. Or maybe when our Lord is taken down from the cross and then again our lady relives all the wounds of our Lord's body as she anoints his body. Or maybe when she laid in the tomb to be separated, the final separation, until she would be assumed in heaven. But no, the spiritual writers say the third son, the loss in the temple, when she was without her, she didn't know where he was. The other times she knew. And she, she ascended to that. She she gave herself, she surrendered to the sacrifice that he was undertaking. She joined in union with the sacrifice of Calvary with his sufferings and took part. But this loss in the temple was her. That she was without our Lord. As our Lord on the cross said, My God, my God, why stop forsaking me in the desolation? And so we go through these times with struggles, and these are the deepest struggle spiritually, as St. John of the Cross speaks of the dark night of the soul. We come to those times where it's just dry. Prayers have no meaning. To you. Not that they have no meaning, but they have no appeal. There's no consolation. And our Lord takes us through this time to try and see even more severe, to, to really purify our soul completely. That we're even detached from spiritual consolation, we're detached from ourselves completely. We want nothing but our Lord's love. We want to unite to that. And this is when, this is when we can descend into the deepest truth of Lent, the deepest spirit of Lent, is completely annihilating ourselves from the picture. And fill me with our Lord. And we do this best in you with our Lady. As Saint, Saint John was the only apostle at the, at the cross because he stayed close to our Lady. And so, to we children of our Lady, we need to stay close to her, especially in this day and age when there are so many distractions in the world. And so, also this. 
There are many reasons this would be so, so sorrowful for our mother. First of all, as I mentioned, because this was hers alone, that she was separated from her mother. That she, she, this, this was not foreseen that she would be without him, without him, and she did not know where he was. And so they went back and searched for three or four days, the duration. You know, sometimes I, I've heard my, my family is very large, sometimes they lose children on the trip. You know, that will be for some hours or days that go find. No, three or four days. And this, knowing that he was the divine child, and the responsibility they had for him, the, the weight of that, thinking, God has trusted me with this great responsibility, and here I am, I am failing, and the, the child is, is, is gone from our sight, you know, not where. And also, but mostly, I would say, this is a representation of man's loss of God's presence in his soul. And this is to be feared and the most painful. Because no matter where we go, we have God with us until we sin. When we sin, we turn our back on God and we turn from Him and we become a part of Him. He's representative of our Lord's agony in the garden. It always makes me think of He took on our sins and you have God and sin as complete opposites. They do not coexist for our Lord to take on something that was complete opposite, completely contrary to him, to his divine nature. And so our lady, as she loved our Lord so much, and she was in union with him all, all the time, to be in that loss, to see that, that representation of man's suffering, man's loss, because she knew that as our Lord was to suffer and die on the cross and give himself a man, there were those who were not to use the graces that were uh, accrued from his suffering, from his pain, and hers too. And so this, this scene, how empty it is. You, you're, you're with someone that you love, and you're around them, and you enjoy their company, and they fill up your day, you break your day, and then you're without them, for a long time, and it's, it's not the same. And then once you see them again, you're jealous. And so, think of this on a scale of being around the divine child. It must have been very uplifting, knowing that his perfection itself, yes, he, he grew in age and grace, grew in his experiences. But the comfort, knowing that God is with you, that we have here on the altar, and then being without, being lost, you think of the martyrs, in, you know, in, in their, their, their cages, being separated from, from the brethren, and being cut off, but they, they had the faith. But not receiving the sacraments, not receiving this light of grace, this special grace. It was a very trying time. So this, above all, was Our Lady's suffering, Our Lady's deepest sorrow, being separated from our Lord for three long days. And then, when they find our Lord, He says to them, Do you not know I, I, I have to be about my Father's business? And this just shows us the work of God brings for us suffering. Brings for us sufferings, which is our work, which is our, our, our salvation. Because we have this fallen human nature that impedes our spiritual growth, impedes our spiritual life by its needs and wants. And so, the more we can fight against it, the more we can diminish it, the greater our spiritual life will be. And the more, e the more easy it will be to, to always walk in the presence of our Lord. 
and always remain in it. And so, let us remember that when we lose sight of God, we, 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 in our deep sorrows, in our dark night of the soul, when nothing is consoled, especially in our miseries, and especially if we continue to seek Him, you know He is He is with us. He is, he is always there especially in our sufferings, as that is the closest we can come in union with Him, when we diminish ourselves and our spirit reigns free. We are close, closely united to Him on the cross. So let us always turn to our blessed Lord, that we may always remain there, and come to the eternal joys of heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.